Hey everybody, I'm Jen with Generated Designs and today I'm going to be sharing with you a detailed look at how I warp the rigid heddle loom to set it up for a houndstooth scarf pattern, which is the one I'm wearing here today. If you like this video or you'd like to see more videos, please comment down below and subscribe so you can get all our future videos. Let's get weaving! Here you can see I have the loom set up and I have a warping peg attached to a chair to run the warp to. I will be weaving approximately 55 inches today so I have my peg set up 60 inches from the front beam. Today I am using 100% wool in two different shades. One is just a natural color and the other is a hand dyed using avocado and iron water. I'm just going to drop those balls of yarn behind the loom and attach the first one to the apron bar. Here you can see I'm measuring out the width of the scarf. I'm going to warp about a 10 inch width and the final project will be between 8 and 9 inches. After you thread the first color through the slot, got a little tangle there. Go ahead and tie on the second color to your apron bar in the back. Don't worry about the colors overlapping. The threads will overlap a little bit. I just pull the next one under and through, but it did not have any effect on my tensioning later on. If you prefer, you can cut and tie each time you change colors, but I find it easier to simply let them overlap on that back beam. The rest of this video is shot in real time. You can see it does take a long time to warp, especially when you're using a fingering weight yarn. Uh, of course, if you use a thicker yarn and a larger dent heddle, this process might be a little quicker. But overall, the entire process took me a little under an hour. Here's a little bit closer look at how the threads are overlapping on the back bar.
right, now we've finished with the direct warping part. Go over to your peg, remove the warp, and cut the ends. I like to tie mine in just a simple overhand knot so that it doesn't come loose while I'm winding it onto the back beam. Now that you're ready to go onto the back beam, I like to use um, craft paper that I got at the dollar store. And since I have a 32 inch loom, the 30 inch roll of craft paper is perfect for this. And I just leave it on there and keep reusing it. If you have a smaller loom, you could try using some shelf paper. Or another thing I do is take old paper bags and just cut the bottoms off and use those to wind onto my back beam. Be sure to use some sort of warp separator. This keeps your threads from getting tangled and affecting the tension in your warp. And then I use the yank and crank method for <laughs> attaching it to the back beam. Just hold on to your warp strands with one hand and twist the knob to advance the warp with your other hand. Occasionally you can see I'm adjusting the paper so that it doesn't move and stays straight. Okay, now that we have it all wound onto the back beam, we can begin to thread our heddle into the hole part so that we have a thread in one hole and one slot. And I also, if you have a double heddle block, I like to put my heddle in the back position because I like to rest my arm on the top while I'm threading it and this prevents it from falling out and losing all of my work. <laughs> Here you can see I'm grabbing the first two, separating them, grabbing one and pulling it through the hole. And then I just like to throw mine over the top to keep them out of the way so I don't get things tangled up. This is quite a long process. If you're familiar with it, feel free to skip ahead to the next section which will be lashing on to the front apron bar.
Okay, now that our heddle is completely threaded, we are ready to tie on to our front apron bar. And there are a couple different ways that you can choose to do this. Many beginners um, just tie straight on to the apron bar with small bundles. Grab a bundle, divide it in half, and tie around. Tie around once, twice, pull that tight. Then you can let that sit there while you tie the rest of them the same way, working from the center towards the end. I personally don't like this method very much because it creates a lot of waste. I prefer to do a lashing on technique, which I'll show you next. For the lashing on technique, you'll need to grab bundles and tie an overhand knot at the end. But first, you can see here, I'm going to separate my threads just to make sure I have all the slots and all the holes threaded correctly. Sorry, I think you might be able to hear an airplane in the background. I am outside at the moment. So I like to grab fairly small bundles. I'm grabbing four sections. Um, so two of the gray threads, two of the white threads. So that I have a total of eight. Four on top, four on bottom. And I'm going to do that all the way across.
Okay, we've got all of our warp ends tied and we're ready to start lashing them onto the apron bar. I'm going to use a strand of cotton because cotton doesn't tend to stretch very much. But first you can see here, I'm checking to make sure that the length from the apron bar to the knots is not too close because they will stretch as we pull on them. So here you can see my cotton thread and you want a section that's about six times the width of your project. Mine's a bit longer than that. I tend to leave a long one just attached to my apron bar and reuse it every time I weave something. I'm just going to slip it over the apron bar and pull it tight. Next, you're going to grab one of your warp bundles, divide it in half, and put your cotton thread through. I like to put the knots down on the bottom so they're not sticking up. Then wrap around the beam and grab your next bundle. Continue this process all the way across and then you'll tighten it up at the end. Here you can see towards the end, the last couple of ones were a bit long, so I had to undo the knots and tie them up a little bit higher. Otherwise you'll have, your warp threads will have too much slack on them and you won't be able to continue to tighten. Now you can go ahead and fashion your lashing string onto the apron bar. Oh, wait, I've got one more.
Okay, now that that one's on, you can tie your lashing string onto the front apron bar. You just wrap it around a couple times and then secure it. Bring up a loop, pull it through, make sort of a slip knot there. Now after you get this secure, you will be able to pull on the lashing string and adjust the tension of all your warp threads. Sometimes it helps a little too to advance the warp towards the front beam to tighten things up so you can get a good feel on how tight your tension is. You just want to spread that tension out through all the strands. It'll tend to be tighter towards the end where you finished than at the beginning. Just keep playing around with the lashing string until you get your tension to be even where you want it to be. Once you've got your tension where you like it, you'll be ready to tighten up the warp threads. I like to use a section of rubber shelf liner, which I believe I also got at the Dollar Tree. This helps to keep those bumps where your knots are tied from digging into your warp and distorting it. After you've got everything tightened up where you want it to be, you're ready to weave in a section of waist yarn. That'll be kind of like a header at the beginning of your weaving. Here I'm just using uh, some scrap acrylic that I had. It's about a DK weight, so it'll spread out my warp a little bit faster. And since I did the lashing on and I'm weaving my header very close to the ends, I like to leave at least an inch and a half so I have enough room for any fringe that I want to add. If you want longer fringe, you could, of course, weave a larger section of waist yarn, or you could just advance your warp a little more and begin your waist yarn further up. I'll add a link in the description box below to the video where I actually wove the hound tooth pattern so that you can see that process. Again, if you like these videos, please comment, like, and subscribe so that you can see all my future videos. Let me know what you want to see, and I will try to get that up for you.